welcome to everyone who's joining. You can see we, the attendees are climbing up. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Adam. Welcome, Paul, Kerry, Joe, Portia. Welcome, everyone. As you're joining, um, please do have a look around and find where you can see the, the chat part of this um, this Zoom interface, and please let us know where you are joining from. It's so it's so great to have you with us, and we'd love to know where you are joining from. So try see if you can try and find the chat, and then let us know where you're joining from, so we can see see where you are um, joining from. Remember, when you post in the chat, to send it from to all all panelists and attendees, and um, so that we can see it. So we got um, Kubas from Johannesburg. Welcome. Tony is, is, is with me and I'll introduce her soon. She's also joining from, from Johannesburg. Paul from Durban, welcome Paulo. Um, Joe from Sandhurst, welcome. We're, gonna, we're going to um, allow some, some minutes just to let everyone join um, before we get started. So as, um, as we see people joining, let us know where you're from and we're just going to, um, gonna, hold on for a one or two minutes just to allow um, those who have registered to to join because usually what happens is sometimes um, you know some people have some technology hurdles they just need to jump over to get onto the webinar i'm joining from durban um, and um, so i've also from durban i see there's a, a number of people joining from durban as well some more from from alon from johannesburg welcome alon Sean from Johannesburg. Yeah, we've got. Um, I'm joining joining you from from my um, my place in Glenwood, Durban, and so we we are here locked down in in our house over here, and you can hear my son in the background. I'm sure. Um, so please ex excuse the the play that's happening there. Um, he's running around and and having a good time. Welcome, Dean from Cape Town. It's the first one I've noticed um, from Cape Town on this webinar. Um, so welcome, Dean. Right. We got sure there's still a lot of people joining up, so we're going to give it a couple more moment, moments. So just bear bear with us as we as we allow people the space space to join. And thanks so much to all of you who have joined now. Thank you for joining. We really have we're excited to have you on this webinar. Welcome, Jose from Shanghai, Durban. Right, it seems like everyone has managed to find um, the the webinar chat, which is great. Um, a lot of you have found it. Um, so as we are allowing a bit more time for for people to join, um, I'll I'll just start explaining a couple of the um, the key uh, key things that we'll use um, in this webinar as we go through it. So. We have a question, question answer feature on Zoom that we use. Um, and so towards the, towards the end, we'll have a nice open time for questions and answers where you can, you can ask um, Tony um, questions and you can post those questions into the Q&A, which you'll find at the bottom of your screen. If you can't find that, but you have managed to find the chat, you can also feel free to post questions into the chat. Um, and what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll just pull those questions together and then we'll, um, we'll ask Tony those questions um, at the end. And for those of you that are, are brave enough, it would, it would be wonderful to actually hear you um, on, online. So we'd like to try and bring some of you up onto the webinar when you ask those questions so that you can interface with Tony um, directly and ask her questions um, directly. So that'd be really great. So you, at the end in the question answer session, I will be asking a few of you if you would be comfortable with doing that. If you're not comfortable with, with joining live, that's absolutely fine. No problem at all. Um, we, can, um, we can ask the question um, on your behalf um, from the text that you've asked either in the Q&A um, tool or on, on the, the chat. So that's completely up to you. Right, Tony, I think we've given um, everybody enough time to join. So I think it's time that we get started. Uh, firstly, from, from my side here in Durban, I just want to say a very, very warm welcome to you. Um, thank you for joining us um, this evening. So Tony Gaddy is a clinical and sports psychologist who specializes in 
champions. And I am just so grateful, Tony, that you, you have agreed to, um, to join us on a webinar. It's, it is so well-timed. <laughs> I really love the timing of this. And we're really grateful that we have a moment to speak to you um, around you know, what it takes to be a champion and what we can learn from the mental fortitude of champions. And I, you, your reputation precedes you. Tony was a internationally ranked tennis player. And so not, not only um, does she have the academic background, um, but she also has the background in being a champion herself, um, which really makes this a really, really great conversation because I think you can cross many different aspects and I'm very excited to hear um, about what your, your thoughts and your experiences and, and about the mental fortitude, the champion's method. So Tony is the, is the founder of the Champion Academy. Tony, firstly, before we kick off, can you just let me know what, what the Champion Academy is? You're a co-founder of the Champion Academy. What does the yeah. Champion Academy do? Well, first, James, thank you so much for inviting me. And yeah, exactly. I really appreciate this platform. It's, it's so exciting. So thank you and welcome to so many people from all over the country. That's so lovely to see. Um, so the Champion Academy, I founded or we founded my sister and I, Ricky, um, in 2012. And, and we, founded it, we founded it because we felt that there were so many kids students and people who didn't have the tools to fulfill their dreams. They didn't have the, the tools that we know only now to enable them to fulfill their potential. And on our journeys, we didn't have those tools. And then we learned them only years and years later. And we want to share that with people individually and in groups so that they can, um, be equipped with um yeah getting what they want in life yeah it's so great and um you know one of the one of the things so we at here at advantage learn we work um we work with high school students and and we really try to um be helpful in the journey towards towards excellence and at, at whatever level and um, and we focus at the moment into maths um, and science at a high school level um, and we can, you, if anyone who's listening wants to, wants to check us out, you can see us at advantagelearn.com. But essentially, one of, the, one, of the, um, one of the interesting points that is very relevant to, to our community is we work with quite a number of young athletes and champions in various, dis um, various disciplines. And it's, it's just so exciting that um, you have started something where you are sharing knowledge to young people and not only young people, champions that are current um, and in their professional career because it is so needed. Um, so I think without further ado, I think what, what we should do is dive straight into um, your presentation about mental, mental fortitude and the champion's method. And I'd love to, to hear these insights and then we can open up for discussion and really get into um, discussing the different aspects of it as we go through it. So if you're, if you're ready, Tony, I'd, we'd really love to, to pop over into, into hearing about mental fortitude, the champion's method. I am. I am so ready. So Great. actually, if everyone saw the advert, they would have seen that I changed the name to mental fortitude as opposed to being mentally tough or having a strong mind. And the reason I changed the name is because for all of us, no matter where we're from, no matter what context we're from, what walk of life, during this time, during lockdown and, and uh, COVID-19, we all need a little bit of extra fortitude. And um, I looked up this word fortitude because it sounds so strong. And it said courage in the face of adversity. And, and I think all of us are going to be affected and um, we're all going to need that courage, whether it's courage to finish this lockdown period or it's beyond um, and the consequences for ourselves, for other people, for our professions, for our careers, for our dreams. We really need extra bravery to keep on going. So that's why I changed the word. Um, yeah, let's get to my story. So as James said, he said, I was a champion myself. I don't see myself that way. I see myself as the story of the less whole champion. 
And it all began, the most defining moment was in Italy, in Rome, Italy, at a hotel called the Hilton Cavalieri. And there I was with my sister, Ricky, who was my doubles partner at the time. And I was ranked about 400 in the world and she was about 200 in the world in singles. And we both were 200 in the world, in the 200s in, in doubles. And we thought we had made it. We got into the main draw of the Italian Open. And this was very tough. I mean, you had to qualify to, for many tournaments before you eventually get enough points to get into the main draw. And so we thought we were made. We were lying on a four-poster bed in this fancy hotel. And um, suddenly, the telephone rang. And, uh, and Ricky answered the phone. And it was an Italian journalist and he had this thick accent and she handed me the phone with such vehemence and she said, I'm not speaking, you speak. So I said, okay, I'll speak. And he said, how do you feel about tomorrow's match? And I said, what are you talking about tomorrow's match? I know we have a match tomorrow, the first round of the Italian Open. He says, yes, you're playing the number one seed. You're playing the best doubles team in the world. And you underdogs from South Africa. I mean, of course, he had a thick Italian accent. And, I, and he said, how do you feel? And I said, I feel fine. I haven't even given a second thought. I was quite cocky at that time. And, um, and then he said, oh, and you're playing against the number one in the world. Don't you feel some extra pressure? And I said, no, we feel like it's just a normal match. And then he said, and they a sister team, and you a sister team. Don't you feel like there's extra tension? And he kept like trying to provoke me. And I said, no. He said, don't you feel like you're, you might fight on court? How's your relationship of court? And I said, our relationship of court is just fine, and we never fight on court. Anyway, the next day, on court, this make or break for us as, as uh, tennis professionals at the Italian Open, you can just imagine how we played against the best doubles team in the world, also a sister team. And, and, and we didn't, we, we obviously did not even address what needed to be addressed on a mental side. And we fought on court. We were so nervous, we could hardly hold our rackets. We blamed each other for making mistakes. And so we were incredibly dis disappointed afterwards, as you can imagine. And after the match, the same guys, I assume they were the same guys, because this Italian journalist had the same voice. And he went running up to the Maleva sisters on the other side of the umpire's chair. And, and he said to them, how did you feel about this match you were playing against underdogs from South Africa? And one of the Maleva sisters spoke, I think it was Magdalena, and she said, we were so, we felt incredible pressure. We were so nervous because we were, the Italians used to say these blondinis from South Africa and we, they had never heard of us and they felt pressure. They felt nerves, the best in the world. And he said, and didn't you feel two sisters playing together? You were under a magnifying glass. And she said, and we were prepared for that. We made sure beforehand that we were going to really encourage each other, pump each other up, and stay mentally composed and focused one point at a time. That conversation, as you can hear, has been going on in my head for years. And it has been a defining moment um, for my whole career going forward. Uh, to cut a long story short, um, we did not break into the Grand Slams as every uh, young uh, professional would dream to get into. And um, yeah, eventually I was sponsored. By, at that time, we were sponsored by Tennis South Africa. We had lots of support. And eventually, eventually sponsorship was pulled. And uh, it was a very tough, pressurizing, uncertain career. Um, which, which I had to eventually give up because 
Uh, it just got way too expensive, too much, pre too much pressure, expecting your, your parents to, to pay for your travels from city to city, from country to country. So it was a, an incredibly um, exciting, adventurous, lots of learning journey. Um, but I had to eventually give up, devastated that my dream of winning Wimbledon had failed. And when I gave up, I transferred or translated this obsession to become a Wimbledon champion into studying champions. And uh, yeah, ever since then, I've been studying champions in sport and um, in, in other aspects of life too. So I just want to give you a little slideshow. There, there was myself with my, with my dream of becoming a Wimbledon champion, incredibly supported by my parents who were encouraging and um, did everything so committed to allowing my sister and I to achieve our dream. And there was a national squad that we were all in and we were all homeschooled at the time. So um, we had to study by correspondence. And um, fortunately, my parents were adamant that we must continue our studies. So this is why I'm able to be a psychologist today. And there are the Maleva sisters. The defining story for me uh, was that these two sisters on either side, you can see them on either side, had this kind of um, mental preparation. The, the one in the middle is also a sister. And all three sisters made it to top 10 in the world with their mother as their coach, which I thought is quite extraordinary. And they, they had this uh, ability to be incredibly prepared when it counted regardless of, of who they were playing, the underdogs or the greats. And um, yeah, so, so this really paved the way for me in terms of what I looked for in champions over time, what I studied in champions and the way we grow, grow champions now. So that was my, my slideshow. There is my sister and I, um, Ricky, at Wimbledon. And nice. interestingly... You can see, in fact, I have to share with you, James, that we had yeah. lost a match there at Wimbledon. And, um, and despite the fact that we had lost, there were two fans. They didn't care that you lose. At yeah. Wimbledon, if you get there, you, 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 you are, um, you, you're famous already. And yeah. uh, we, we were putting on a false smile, again, ignoring our struggles, ignoring and avoiding what needed to be addressed on and off the court in order to be whole champions and to fulfill and express your potential in all aspects of life. I'm just taking a sip of water here. Sure. So, as you, you see in, um, I speak about it in a lot of my articles, I'm sure in the advert, I speak about whole champions. And, um, the reason why I speak about whole champions is I noticed that when I was studying champions, um, particularly legends, there were these champions who I was most interested in. They were able to fulfill their potential or become successful, not only in their field of interest, but in all or other aspects of life. And the unique characteristic about these champions was they could address their dark side as well as their light side, their struggles and their strength. And as a result, they could fulfill and harness all their potential, especially when they faced with <clears throat> adversity, uncertainty and, and, and struggle. So the part, that dark part that I speak about, the struggle that I often refer to, I use this slide and, and um, it is a, for me like a, a manifestation of our dark. And today you would need to have the courage to really get to know this part of you. 
because it is it's this part of you that needs to be identified that needs to be um fortified and grown in order to really fulfill your potential because it is your weaknesses your struggles uh, the stuff that is pushed right down into into the darkness that comes out when you are under pressure now i i have this great story which i love to tell anyone who will listen and, and the story is that that i beat natalie tosia james have i ever told you that <laughs> oh yeah that's first up <laughs> So I beat Natalie Tosia who's a finalist at Wimbledon. She was probably ranked 1 in the world at at one stage. But I beat her in yeah. practice. <laughs> uh, did you hear that part? I beat her <laughs> in practice. So the key is that my little me and and I'm sure your your little me's will look very different. My little me because it was never traced because it was always tucked away and avoided would cut bubble up when i least expected and especially when i was faced with enormous pressure and the pressure of the big time the pressure of when it really counted when i really wanted to bring my potential to the fore so this part of you is the part of you that especially during lockdown would feel discouraged demotivated angry afraid doubting yourself worried overwhelmed oh there's a myriad of of emotions um yeah and today we're going to look at how champions would deal with with those emo emotions and and hopefully you can you can get to know your your little me is a little bit better so in over 20 years of studying whole champions my most important discovery was whole champions are just ordinary so actually when i went back to do my master's thesis with which was at the making of champions a constructed reality i, I went back to 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 interview and um, many world champions and two of my mates who I grew up with the one was Wayne Ferreira and the other one was Amanda Kutsa they they got to both top 7 in the world so for me that was enough you didn't have to be number 1 you could you top 7 was more than enough and i was so intrigued because i was looking for these extraordinary special answers special secrets and in fact i got quite the opposite I got the fact that they were just ordinary but they were so connected to both their strengths and their struggles and when I interviewed them they were so open about it open about the fact that sometimes they hated their sport sometimes they any hated the pressure hated the limelight shared their struggles as well as their their highlights so whole champions are on a journey of fortifying their struggles and amplifying their strengths and enjoying all moments as much as possible and and that that is really key is it's also being able to enjoy the ups and the downs or using tools to enjoy the ups and the downs so the key to mastering any struggle from a whole champion's perspective is the relationship that you have with your little me and of course your great me so your little me is um it represents your struggle and it often rears its head when you are faced with adversity and your great me is just the opposite and i found that not only champions but all of us have little me moments and have great me moments and it's our great me's that can that has the clarity that has the understanding of how to handle the little me and how to harness the little me as long as it is identified and dealt with and if it is then there's much more space made for the great me to shine 
which is our courage, our confidence, our clarity, and the part of us that rises to the occasion under pressure. So the key to growing mental fortitude in students, for parents and teachers, um, is actually looking at your own little me and your own great me. Because it's so interesting, and, and I'm sure you know this, uh, being a father, it, 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 I know it's a cliche saying that, that, that uh, children do as we do, not as we say. And it is really about modeling your in tuneness with your own little me's, with your own struggles, and grappling with how you can figure out tools that can fortify your little me to make space for your positive, for your strengths. And, and, and children watch this. So it is about grappling with your own little me, with the intention of learning tools to fortify it. And hopefully you'll learn something today and experiment with the tools of the whole champion method when faced with, with struggle within yourself and, and between you and your child. And I must say, I've noticed um, with, with many of the, the sports people I work with and um, people who don't play sport, regardless of the career or the profession they, they are in, this time, this redundant, doing the same thing over and over and feeling constrained and the, the anxiety that, that you feel or you hear constantly in the media, this kind of stuff is, is bound to, to bring out your little me. So it's such a great opportunity to, to play around with which tools actually work for you. Anyone, anyone asking questions there, James? Nothing yet, but we can, we can give some space for that. I mean, we can, let's pause there for a moment and, um, and just, yeah, see if there's any questions and that um, will come through. But yeah, Tony, it's such an interesting way of, of, of looking at it, you know, linking the, the little me to the great, the great me kind of really hit home on my side. It really resonated with me. And I think, you know, you, you mentioned lockdown. Lockdown certainly has been like, a very significantly challenging time for people. It's something, you know, a lot of us have never ever experienced before. I haven't, certainly haven't, um, you know, having to stay in one place for a prolonged period of time where you know, you're not able to, to leave the confines of your, of your home. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been challenging in, in, in that regard. And I'm certainly seeing it as, you know, we work with, um, with our students um, and our teams, we're seeing it in this stage now, you know, this, this week, especially we're seeing this, maybe the little me and all of us just like going crazy, you know, wanting, wanting to, to, to get out or do something and, um, and show its face. And, and I think, you know, you said it's, it's a great time to get to know that side of you, to get to know that little me. And it really resonated. It really resonated. It was a great point because I think we have a unique opportunity in this in this time to really get to know that that side of us. I mean, it's interesting that 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 is a core component of you know becoming a champion, getting to know the dark side, as you mentioned it. Because most of us, our default will be, don't get to know the dark side. Put it in a corner. Don't go to the dark side. You know, play to our strengths only. And um, so it's very yeah. It's a really really good. Good point. And so I wanted to ask you, what did that, I mean, you, you shared your story there, but what did that look like for you getting to know your little me or getting to know your dark side as you studied it and learned about it and realized that it was a core part of being a whole champion? So I think um, for a long time, uh, I, it wasn't addressed. And, um, but those, the, the two stories that I love to tell really showed me that the the one against the Maleva sisters was so clear. Like I didn't, I was afraid. I didn't have the courage, and it, so that's why it's so nice to have this word fortitude because I didn't have the courage to look at what I could be feeling under pressure, the anxiety, um, the, the the maybe the mistake, 
uh, that I would make under pressure. And it's yeah. so interesting because if I did, if I envisaged that, then I would have been at least, it would have been almost a rehearsal in my mind that I would have been prepared for it. So the first step is that the, the feeling would have been more familiar if I would have imagined that maybe I would have been anxious playing against the best of the, in the world. Yeah. And the funniest thing is that even the best in the world today get anxious um, and, they've, and they've played so many tournaments already um, and they've played the big time for many, many years. So I think it is about those, those two stories are so significant. So it's about looking at um, the stuff that I'm afraid to look at and knowing that, in fact, when I look at it, it's there to serve me. Um, it's going to give me clues of what I can do to make, to, to, to make me feel better um, in, in, the, in the most difficult times. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've got a question through. So I'm, I'm going to see if, 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 we can bring, if we can bring them online, if, um, if, they, if they're comfortable with it. So um, Hotatsu, I, I think, I hope I have um, pronounced it right. I'd like to try and bring you um, live onto, um, on with us. So I'm going, to, I'm going to give you access to be able to talk to us. Um, and please do um, join us and ask your question to Tony directly, um, if you can. Hi, Tony. Hi, there you are. Do you, this, yeah, do it's, you it's, know? It's, yeah, it's KG. <laughs> KG, I want to share with people, I don't, I'm, I hope they can see me. But do you know that James asked me, how come you have that tennis ball behind you in, in, at your bookshelf? And I said, oh, it was from the Rio Olympics. And he said, oh, wow. And I said, you know that, that, that one of my clients was there and she played and it's even signed by her over here. I don't know if people can see. So how isn't it wonderful that you, you, you share, you're coming and speaking to me, KG? <laughs> you know, I would have missed this moment. I think it's just uh, one of the most important moments considering what we're going through at the moment. So... I wouldn't, I wouldn't have missed it. So I, I just thought it would be important for me to, you know, to come through. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate um, that, that, that you're speaking and you're sharing. Um, K, KG is one of our, she is our best uh, t uh, tennis player in South Africa, uh, para, para para tennis player in South Africa, wheelchair tennis player in South Africa, and she is her highest ranking. KG, correct me if I'm wrong, is your highest ranking being five in the world or six in the world? Uh, it's five. It's five. Five. So yeah. isn't that remarkable? So, yeah. Oh. Hey, you can share with everyone here that, that you've, you, you've used a lot of what we're going to speak about going forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, actually, I just I just had a question as we were talking about, you know, the little me. And obviously, my question was, why is it so difficult to be able to, you know, handle the little me like I would normally do in a, in a real, you know, circumstances or in a real world? Under this lockdown, it's like it's so actually difficult to be able to be in control of that because everything, it just seems so doom and shattered. Like nothing is actually motivating at the moment and i'm struggling to understand why can't i you know get in touch with a little bit and be able to control it like i would in a normal circumstances yes so of course this this is a question for everybody um and firstly i want to say that the reason why it's harder for you to using your words control it is because it, it is because in the, these are surreal, traumatic, radical circumstances. For yeah. everybody who, everybody struggles, are going to come to the fore. Even if um, you secretly like this time, there's, there's some people who have secretly li liking this time to just be at home. And they, you will find that your little me will come to the fore. Um, at the same time, it's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel nice. It's emotions which are, which are not pleasant. That they are, 
are discouraging, they are demotivating, and especially for sportsmen. On a physical level, you are not, uh, you are not training, you are not um, expending the energy you used to expend, you, you don't have goals set for yourself for your next competitions. And so it's so critical that, that you use tools. Firstly, to, first you identify your little me and it's totally valid to be there. And, and to, to use the tools that you've learned from, for, for matches, but also today to share some um, setting little goals for yourself. And those goals can be to just actually enjoy the day um, as well as some mental training. I think we, we really need to speak to uh, about mental training uh, for athletes, for sports people. Yeah, KG, thank you so much um, for, for asking your question and for joining us um, on, online and live here. So thank you um, for joining us. Thank you. Right, Tony, I think, I think let's, um, we've got another question in, so let's, um, from Hania, um, do you, I think let's ask it, um, directly and then we can keep going on your on your presentation tony so the question is i heard that tony um mentioned using tools to overcome struggles how did you identify those struggles and what tools did you use to overcome your struggles so that that is definitely time it, it the the key to identifying your struggle is to be very conscious of how you feel day by day, moment by moment. And if the feeling generally is not good, the little me represents every emotion that is not good, that makes you feel unpleasant, uncomfortable, um, down, demotivated, demoralized. So, so it is about really tuning into how am I feeling in this moment and about asking the question, what would make me feel better? And in the past, what have I done in the past when I felt this way that made me feel better? I mean, today yeah. we're going to hear how champions, or, or just a few of the tools that champions have used. And so it's so really about tuning in to how your body feels and, and how you feel emotionally, uh, mm -hmm. moment by moment, day by day. And yeah. his, his other question, sorry, was? No, that, 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 was, that was it. And, and so... I mean, if I'm if I'm understanding you um, correctly, there, Tony. It's you know you, sometimes you have the tools right at your disposal. You just need to get yourself to be aware of what those are, you know, um, and and just introspect and get get in touch with your little me to see how how what those tools you have at your disposal to kind of and um, deal with the struggles um, that your your little me is going through or that you're going through. And um, so yeah, I think it's a good good opportunity, a good segue to kind of continue and and see what these tools are possibly that's come out from, from champions and how they, they deal with it. Yeah, to, just to continue with, with KG, just before I, I carry on with the presentation, is the key to act to tuning in to your little me is the, is, is the validating Kimohe as normal. It's, you're going to feel like this at this, that, at this time. It, it's normal that even the greatest of greatest feel like this. They all have a negative component to themselves. And yeah, let's hear what the, let's hear how the greatest do it. The champion, how champions grow mental fortitude. And let's look at the whole champion method and see if you can apply each step to your own unique situations. So A. So it's A to E. Acknowledge your little me as normal and connect with it. And the key to actually connecting with it. So it's first identifying with it. And, and that was such a good question because the way you identify it is that it feels bad, sad or mad. It's that simple. And you acknowledge that as normal as everybody goes through this. And just by acknowledging it and knowing it's normal, it will be your way into connecting with it. And already it will be soothed a little and maybe even quieten and go to the back of your mind. So there's one of my legends that I've studied, Serena Williams, the best in the world already at 2013. Now, 
it, it, this was a long time ago when Serena was interviewed um, after a 2013 French Open win. And we didn't have great phones at the time. I couldn't take a photo, but I quickly jotted down um, what I read so that I could always remember it. And after she had won the French Open in 2013, she said this to, to in the interview. I got really nervous after my practice. I thought to myself, it does not matter if you're really nervous. You are in the final and you just have to do something. In the warm up, I thought my nerves were really getting to me. If I can hit just some balls over the net, I will be okay. But if for me, that this is someone who wins the French Open. She's number one in the world. Can you hear how she soothed her little me? She was already conscious that she was feeling really, really nervous after her practice. That was her practice before the final. And for her, she said to herself, she soothed herself. She dialogued with herself. Doesn't matter if you're really nervous. You're in the final. You just have to do something. It's crazy for me to think that someone so great uh, just has to do something in the final of, of a, a Grand Slam. And yeah, she won, she won that final. There's Serena again, but this is five years later in 2018 at the US Open. And I'm not sure if, if any of you know, know, knew or watched what happened, um, but she really lost. Her, lit, her little me went out of control there. Uh, the umpire uh, called a bad call. Um, she questioned it. She lost her temper. She then got penalized. And for me, it's so important for us to know, and this is to, to both those questions previously, that you can see how even the greater still, after many years, the, the little me will come to the fore when it's an incredibly pressurizing, intense situation. And what is even more um, significant about that picture for me and that statement underneath is that Serena, there was a lovely article speaking about how after that tournament at the US Open when she lost in the final, she could not find peace with her behavior. And so she went to therapy and, and, and she, she resolved um, that experience for herself. But you don't have to go for therapy. It's not for everybody. It's really about if there's something you're really struggling, and especially in this lockdown, it is about sharing your struggles with others. Because mm -hmm. just sharing the struggle can make an enormous difference. And it also, then another person who you're sharing with can share their struggles. And, and in the conversation, you can help each other and, and both um, share tools that, that have worked for you. So A is acknowledge your little me as normal and connect with it. B is breathe. Breathe in your great me. Breathe out your little me. So breathing is the most underestimated but very well used tool for all high performance sports. And breathing gives you the space to change direction. I'm going to talk more about breathing just now, but I just want to share where I got the, this breathe in your great me, breathe out your little me from. So there's Maria Mutola. I, I interviewed Maria uh, for my thesis. This was many years ago, but I interviewed her many times. She was the most wonderful open champion who gave me much, many hours. And um, Maria was a world champion, Olympic champion, 800 meter uh, athlete. And um, her story was that she came from a very poor context, a very poor background in Mozambique. And um, she, she was scouted and someone gave her a scholarship to the United States, to a high school, and she, she went to a college, she did really well in athletics, and then she hit the big time. But she shared with me that before every race, 
Maria would look at the other athletes from other apparently fancy places in the world and she would see them as queens and her as servant, as a servant. And she would say to me that she would catch, she didn't use the word little me, but she said she would catch her thinking. And in that moment, she would breathe in the queen of her world and she would breathe out the servant of her world. And she would do that a number of times until she could feel like she had the worthiness to compete. And while she was breathing, she used to also say to herself, I have trained just as hard as these girls. My technique is just as good as these girls. I have put in the hours, maybe more than these girls, and I'm worthy of being the queen of the track. And so, so for me, that, that is a beautiful story in terms of how you can breathe and access how much work you've put in and, and the moments where you actually have invested in yourself to perform at your peak or to perform in a test because you have done the extra, extra maths, the extra signs, the, the extra energy. And, and that could also motivate you um, during this time. Yeah. I just want to quickly share with you all an amazing TED Talk, uh, probably the best one you can listen to on, on breathing. And it's called Breathing Can Change Your Life by Lucas Rockwood. And it is, it speaks about many of my clients know that I, I speak about whiskey breathing, coffee breathing, and water breathing. And, and I'd really like you all to, to go and explore um, these breathing techniques because they can give you that tool um, when you're feeling that little me is beginning to dominate. Just that breath will give you the space and the air to change direction. And then meditation apps I've written there are also, there's lots to go around and it's very, very worthwhile experimenting with meditation apps. Yeah. C, choose a mental tool or action that works and focus on it. This keeps you concentrated in the moment and gives you momentum. So there's another close champion that I spent um, a lot of time with in Switzerland, actually. His name is Johan Kors. He's a world champion, an Olympic champion speed skater. He's also an Olympic coach and he's from Norway. Um, we had many conversations together in, in a place called Davos at the World Economic Forum where lots of leaders come together and share their ideas and insights. And he shared with me something quite extraordinary, which is why I use this important statement, choose a mental tool or action that works and focus on it. So Johan was at a world championships and he expressed how his body didn't feel good. He was feeling anxious. He was feeling uncomfortable while he was actually racing. And his coach, of course, was watching from the side. And despite the fact that he was feeling really uncomfortable, he felt his little me was, was evident. And despite the fact that mentally and physically he was not feeling good, his coach shouted out as he turned the corner, corner's brilliant, corner's brilliant. And he caught wind of, this, of the statement as his sh coach shouted it to him. And he said how he kept repeating that statement, corner's brilliant, corner's brilliant, corner's brilliant, over and over again in his mind. And before he looked around, he had won that final of 10,000 uh, 10, meter race world championship. And he started off with his little me dom dominating and one mental tool that he concentrated and kept him focused in the moment, got him to increase his speed, increase his comfort and the rest was history. Amazing. So I just want to share with you now 
um, a lot of the time in in lockdown, it's it's for many of us, especially now, this school has started, um, extra lessons have started, and or they've been going on all this time, and it, it's it, it, the energy that we need to get these things done. We need more energy. It, it seems tougher, and I usually use the statement "just do, don't think." So that just do, don't think is a great mantra when you feel like, ah, oh, I wish I could be doing something else. I wish I could just get into my car and leave. Just do and don't think, meaning you need to focus on the task at hand. And before you know it, the task will get done. Also one step at a time and really pat yourself on the back for getting through that one step at a time, whatever you, you need to be doing at home. A great one for, for learners, um, for students, now that school homeschooling has started, is the 15 minute rule. And I, I use that for matric students especially. The 15 minute rule is a rule that that I actually I learned from a, a squad, tennis squad that I was in many years ago. And when we were feeling tired and demotivated and we needed to do training after practice, that is physical training after practice, our coach said to us, just do it for 15 minutes. Give it your all and ask yourself the question after 15 minutes, can I go further? And 99.9% 99 .9 of the time, you can. And so set your timer for 15 minutes. Study as hard as you can. Do your mental training for the athletes in, in the audience for 15 minutes. And then ask yourself if you can carry on. And of course, music is an incredible tool. And every great champion that I've studied uses their own unique music to change their mood. It's in fact the quickest tool to use that can literally change the chemicals in your body. So when you're feeling flat and demotivated, up, upbeat, arousing music will make you feel excited and ready to go, whatever you need to do. And of course, calming music and baroque music especially is my favorite, classical music when you need to feel composed and quiet in the mind and, and focus on something quiet that you need to be focusing on. And then again, movement is absolutely, the more you can move, make a, you, you change your momentum by moving and you build momentum. So just like your Han Kos, um, when if he, little me was dominating, but getting up and doing press ups or walking around the garden, if you have a garden, already will change the chemicals in your system and will give you more momentum to continue with your task. D, we are. Okay, I need to up the pace a little bit. I, I can see the time. <laughs> Decide what you want and write it down and imagine it is happening now. So those aren't sports champions, I'm sure you can see. But because this is Advantage Learn, and I'm sure there are some science uh, protégés in the audience, uh, can anyone tell me who that champion of science is? Of course you can. <laughs> of start. course you can. I don't have to even say who he is, right? No. He said, your imagination is the preview of your life's coming attractions. I want you to all think about how profound that statement is. Your imagination is the preview of your life's coming attractions. So if that is true, according to Einstein, then the my above champions formula, decide what you want, write it down, and imagine it is happening now is so critical to the next day and the next day and post lockdown and beyond, regardless of whatever field 
you you are in. And so that very much talks to your intentions and goals. Setting your intentions for yourself, your goals for yourself. Write them down. And everybody's different. Someone like, some people like long-term. Some people like daily goals. You have to figure out what motivates you most and, and revisit them. Revisit them in lockdown. I would think one needs to revisit them daily because it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tough time to be motivated. But there already Einstein knew an incredible tool that all great athletes use. Imagination is visualizing, training your mind for what you want to achieve. So even when you're struggling with studying, it is on visualizing yourself studying in a motivated, concentrated way. And there we have the champion of psychology. And I don't think I should ask this question because I'm not sure if everyone, would you know, James? I'm going to say Freud. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, of course, Freud is, is very much one of my gurus and my clients know that I speak about him quite a, quite a bit. And he was such a genius because he knew about um, uh, sports psychology too and how, how to, the re reality construction. And he said, pictures are the language of the body, which, which speaks to our attention. What are we putting our attention on? And if pictures are the language of the body and we want our body to be directed in a certain way. Our body is our chemicals and our body affects our mind. It affects what we do. So we need to see pictures in our mind as well as write down routines of what we can see ourselves doing on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And those, of course, we want to see that we, we, we're doing things in the ideal. We want to see ourselves performing at our peak. We want to see ourselves concentrated at work or um, running as fast as we can on the spot, as, as most of us can only do during lockdown. So it's so interesting that both these champions of science and psychology speak about intentions or goals. They speak about visualization and the importance of routine. And creating your own routines for yourself with little goals and visualizing them happening in the here and now is going to play a, a very positive influence in, in how um, the rest of these two weeks can unfold. And last but la not least, eyes are friendly and fun. So there is a professional tennis player the end of pace. Now, now I, 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 I don't like to tell the story, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because he was such a legend and you'll see how long, well, it says there three decades. He started playing professional tennis when I started playing professional tennis. And he lasted three decades, winning the most amount of doubles and mixed titles ever won. And it's interesting if you study his language, um, it can be distilled to one positive affirmation. Um, and that positive affirmation with his partners, whoever he played with, because you can remember, you can imagine over three decades, there are many, many partners. Yeah. Um, he said, I trust you 100% and I'm there for you 100%. So you can imagine if not only we use that language to our little me's, mm -hmm. I trust you 100% and I'm there for you 100%. You can hear how you're talking to your struggle and you're talking to your strength, that you will figure it out, that you will find a way. Um, so again, back to those questions, it's so important that we, our eyes, the way we look, at our struggles need to be in a friendly way, need to be in a gentle way. Yeah. Um, and then we can figure out the tools to, to fortify them. Another legend couple um, who, who I speak about, I'm using couples also here because 
in, in this period of time, we, we often with lots of people, um, or not lots of people, but our families a day in and day out. And so being friendly and having some fun is so important for, for all of us to get through this time. And these are ice dancing world champions and Olympic champions, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer. And, and they, over two decades, they, they won titles. And their mantra would be, we respect and support our differences and our struggles. And so there you can hear again the relationship with the great me's and their, their little me's. They really respect their differences and their struggles. And, and when you relate not only to your little me like that, but to others like that, you can imagine the potential that can be expressed and fulfilled through a relationship like that. So looking at this time, despite its struggles, despite the constraints that we under, but as best as we can to look at this, this time in a friendly way um, and add fun as much as possible is going to keep going. Because look at that, two, three decades, it, it will keep, it will really keep our great me's going. Seeing as though this is the method for transforming your little me to great me. And to end off a summary, acknowledge your little me as normal and connect with it. Breathe in your great me, breathe out your little me. Choose a mental tool or action that works and focus on it. Decide what you want, write it down and imagine it is happening now. And last but not least, eyes are friendly and fun. And so it, it's important that you take this formula and you apply it to your own situation. And there'll be times where you need to really identify and acknowledge your little me to soothe it. There'll be times that you might need to be, for some, you have to be loving but firm with your little me and say, it's enough. It's enough, Netflix. Now it's time to go train outside. Now it's time to go put some work in. Yeah. But there'll be different steps for you to use at different moments of your struggle. And even maybe different moments when you see your strength coming to the fore that decide what you want and really imagine milk it happening in the here and now can really excite you and, um, and put all the necessary parts in place for it to unfold when we get out of, of, of this uh, radical time in, in all our lives. So I know that I I'll keep looking at my clock because it is just on time. So I just okay. want to say thank you so much to, to, to everybody for, for attending and, and, and yeah, the, 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 smallest, the smallest intention we can have during this time is to see if we can get out of this with much more great me than little me. And, and that's, that's all I, I, I would love you all to, to, to challenge yourself to do. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tony, I look, really appreciate. Thank you for. Um, we're gonna we're gonna ask for some questions now, but thank you for sharing that and distilling it in such a helpful way. Um, you know, with that mnemonic of just A B C D E. It's 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 so helpful to have that, and I think what we'll we'll try to do is we'll we'll share that out with everyone um, so that they have access to that if they haven't taken notes and got it down. But one of the you know one of the interesting things that struck home to me through that as well is is on the point of the visualization where you had um, Einstein and Freud um, is I remember reading a study where they they studied basketball players who were shooting hoops and they did the study and they said they separated it statistically into three groups um, and they had you know they had they had the, the, the group that was um, the standardized group and then they, they, they separated it out and one group was um, a group that had to shoot you know a certain number of hoops and it was like 10,000 and then another group was was a group that just had to purely visualize that 
um, that shooting 10,000 baskets or whatever you call it in basketball terms. And then they did, they tested the, how they did before and after that visualization and that practice in those, in those two, two or three groups. And they find statistically no difference. In fact, they found that the, the, the group that visualized actually did better. Now, obviously it was working off a base. It was, it was basketball players. This was not people who'd never done that physiological action before. They had the, the kind of um, muscle memory and, and, um, and their nervous system had been practiced. But at that point, it was just simply the visualization that actually helped them improve their, their statistics. It was a fascinating, fascinating study. But it just, you know, the, the, these things, we, we, you take it for granted that visualization is that powerful. Um, and that's just one of the, the five points that you made there. But yeah, it just, it just struck home to me. We have a question that came through as you were talking um, from Mohammed. And um, he asked, how much impact does the environment have on connecting with the big me? And what can one do to mitigate, to, to mitigate, sorry. And what can one do to more, to mitigate those moments of implosion? So let me read that again. I will go right. How much impact does the in environment have on connecting with the big me? Firstly, and then what can one do to mitigate those mo moments of implosion, especially when trying to teach an actual little person? Yes. So, of course, the environment um, plays an enormous role. Um, and sometimes the environment is not supportive. As you can see, sometimes the, the environment provokes the little yeah. me. And, and so what's so important is to understand that the more self-supporting you are to your own little me, the more um, soothing and normalizing and validating you are to your own irritation. Did mm -hmm. I understand correctly around teaching a little one, maybe who's struggling um, yeah. and, and, and understanding that it's, that it's okay to, to get irritated at the same time to look at your own level of, of patience and, um, and, and perhaps you need to work on that level of patience with yourself because often it's being, being able to be patient with yourself and kind to yourself around you not pushing yourself to yeah. do too much too soon with high expectations. And if you could look at that and soothe that and know that you're doing the best that you can and you are enough, then it will be easier to, to work with a little one who is struggling. At the same time, when he spoke about his own inner implosion, the, the greatest, I, I, I have an article which I, I often speak about around um, the greatest uh, tennis players going to the bathroom um, when they've lost a, before the fifth set. And, and they go to the bathroom because they have lost, they little me, they have lost control of it. And mm. so they, they go to the bathroom to breathe, to calm down. And I highly recommend that Muhammad, when he feels that coming too much, say, let's have a break. Let's go for a walk. Let, let's move our bodies, especially with little ones. Um, and, and amazing how the movement can change the momentum as well as give his little me some space to breathe. Yeah. 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 So it's, 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 it's straight through. I mean, it's straight through those, those first two, you know, it's acknowledge, you know, that those, those, those feelings are there and it's, it's happening. And then to get into breathing to kind of um, help deal with that. It's very, very, very helpful. So we've got another one coming in from, um, from Joe Gaddy. Um, so I'd like to try and bring Joe on. Um, so Joe, if you're comfortable, I'm going to try and bring you online. Um, so I'll just give you access quickly to, um, to be able to ask your question directly. I've allowed you to talk, so if you can just unmute your microphone if you're comfortable and then um, come online and, and chat, chat to Tony. And whilst, we, um, whilst we're waiting for Joe there, um, if, she, if she is going to come online, yeah, if there are any other questions anyone has, I know that, um, I know that um, we passed over the, the half past um, six mark, but I'd like to keep it going and see if there's any other questions um, that we can, we can chat oh. about. With Tony. Hi, Joe. Welcome. It's Joan, actually, Joan. Hi, Joan. Yeah, I just, I just wanted Tony to elaborate.
to everybody the importance of seeing and thinking positive things in this lockdown period, like what you're seeing on TV, the importance of keeping more to the positive side. And can she explain to us, you know, is that important and how important is it? <laughs> Great. Thank you, Joan. Thank you so much. So um, it, it can can I can I share with that's Joan Gaddy. I hope everyone it, it says Joe Gaddy, but that's actually yeah. Joe Gaddy. Yeah. And you can see the resemblance, everybody, of the surname, and that's my mom. <laughs> and that is my, my mother who encouraged and um, created an incredibly positive context for 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 pushing myself and for fulfilling my potential to the extent that I did. Uh, which for some people say that 200 in the world is 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 good enough. <laughs> so so it's it's interesting to hear that from a mother's perspective. How already she's saying that how the media that we immersed in the stream of negative information, of of disease, of death, of anxiety, and it's very important for people to be conscious of that if they keep hearing and absorbing and in, in taking in that information, you cannot not be affected. You cannot not because it's a total imbalance. So I was speaking about today how you need to acknowledge your own personal struggle and your strengths. And it's very interesting for you to see that when you're reading the news and how much you're reading of it in social media, the TV, wherever you look, how do you feel? Ask yourself the question, how do you feel? Of course, it's important to be informed and be uh, practical and uh, keep yourself safe and to know how to prevent yourself from, from getting anything and how to keep others safe. That's critical. But when you take in too much, your imbalance of your little me will just continue to grow without you even knowing it because you're immersed in this wave of, of negativity. So yes, it is very important, Joan, to balance it with positivity and to keep it at a minimal, just enough, and then see whatever you can to fill your mind, to fill your space with goodness, with um, all the things that, that, that uh, bring out your great me, that, that make you feel strong and good and courageous. Yeah, right. and, and keeping right. keep it on the thanks, thanks, Joan. Keeping on the positive is, yeah, it's, if I've personally struggled with that over this time, you know, get bombarded with all this media that's going around, around what's happening and, and the negative media in, in respect of doom and gloom. And, and yes, it's possibly reality in certain contexts, but it's not balanced with, with a positive, with a positive um, and it's it's a difficult thing for I, I believe any human being to to absorb and then reflect in a helpful way. And um, so, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's, it's sound advice. That's very very sound advice. Thank you. All right. So, there any um, are there any other questions? I, I know that um, some people might need to leave. So, I just um, before we entertain a few more questions and then close, I just want to say, Tony, a very big thank you. While we still um, you know, got everyone around, just a very big thank you for joining us. Um, we are endeavouring on you know helping at this time to have some of these conversations to be helpful to our learners, parents, and community. Um, and this certainly was a great jumping off point. You know, looking into how champions deal with high pressure scenarios where they can't control all the variables um, and the mental fortitude that they have to have in those moments and how they do that. To have that distilled in such a helpful way was was really, really great. So thank you. It's certainly something that I'm going to take. I've written it all down as, as you were speaking and I'm going to take, and, take to heart and take into knowledge um, as I move forward. So I know it's been years and years of study and journey for you um, professionally and both as a, as a professional psychologist and as a professional athlete and tennis player. And so it's really great that, you know, you, you just share it in such a simple form and it's so open to share it. So I really want to just show you a lot of appreciation for this and thank you for your time. It's not easy to, to, to do these, these webinars where you don't have a big an audience reflecting and I know how difficult it can be and you did a, an absolutely amazing job. So thank you, thank you very much. 
and there's I can see the chats coming through here. There's just great appreciation to you um, for this. And yeah, we've 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 all got a journey we need to walk during this um, during this crisis and this um, this system shock. And learning from experts is one of the the surest way that we can best navigate. Um, and you certainly are an expert in your field. And so I'm very, very grateful. Thank you, Tony. Um, we will take a few more questions, but I just wanted to say a big thank you to you. A pleasure. Great. Are there any other questions? Well, for those of you who need to leave, we completely understand. Um, so yeah, so you can drop off as we go. But if there are any questions that people would like to, um, would like to, to ask, Please feel free to post it, and we'll um, we'll ask Tony around. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Any others? So we've got. I'll read you some of the messages as they come through, Tony. So you, you're hearing them. Um, so from um, from Dean, thank you to everyone logging off now. Well done, advantage learn. Um, Brenda, thank you. Very informative. Uh, Marianne, thank you, Tony and Advantage Learn. Very insightful and helpful. Um, many thanks, Marianne. To James and Tony, thank you for sharing your wisdom. I truly appreciate it. So relevant and useful. Warm regards, Corin. So some really great, great messages coming through there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Mohammed, peace and love. Great session. And to you, Mohammed. Um, yeah, we don't have any any new um, message um, questions coming through, Tony? But I think from my side, um, you know, one of the one of the items that um, I could ask that I really did want to know, <laughs> and I was going to take I was going to take it offline, um, is what is whiskey breathing? <laughs> that interest that picked my interest there. Um, if I turn my screen slightly, you'll see that there's a little decanter sitting at the. <laughs> Decanter already, James, in the very beginning of the session. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 exactly, exactly what you feel if you uh, a super athlete. No, I'm joking. If you fit <laughs> and you take a sip, a few sips of whiskey, you're gonna feel a relaxation in your body, and yeah. it does exactly that. So it's a type of breathing where you take a brief in breath and you really expand your rib cage. And you yeah. give a long out breath, and for anxiety, um, for um, nerves, for tension in the body, uh, for clarity, it's the best kind of breathing, and I highly recommend it. And that TED talk that I spoke about earlier, yeah. he explains whiskey breathing for calming, coffee breathing for waking yourself up and motivating yourself, and um, water breathing for getting into the flow, getting into the flow of. Uh, your work, your training, whatever you need to be in the moment. So um, all three are different kinds of breathing for different states of mind that you would need for different situations. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's very helpful. Okay. Very, very helpful. No, yeah, Tony, so I think, I think we've great. got a lot of messages coming through saying thank you again. Um, so I'm sure that you are feeling very, very, very spent after this. It's, it's, it's hard going to, to go through this for an hour. So I really do want to say thanks again. And I think we can close it there. Many useful lessons from this and we will be sharing this out um, on our YouTube channel of Advantage Learn. And for those of you that are, are still around or are watching this, um, please do follow us on our socials. Um, our Facebook handle is Advantage Learn One. Um, you can find our Instagram and Facebook handles at, um, at our website, which is advantagelearn.com. Um, and please do look to sign up to our newsletter so we can keep you informed with some of these helpful sessions and helpful tips um, and what is, what is happening in our environment. To the parents, learners, teachers who joined us, thank you so much. Um, to Tony, our special guest, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it was really great to have you on this, and, and we can already see from the sentiments that, you know, it's been very helpful to people at this time. And you can find Tony by those details that you can see on the screen right now, www.championacademy.co.za, um, and you can email Tony at tony at So Tony, thank you so much again. Have a good evening.
Um, and I'm sure this will not be the last one. We will be, we'll be talking about the many different things you have studied and used um, over time. And yeah, I'm really just grateful for you, mate, to you for making the time. So thank you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Keep safe and um, keep positive and apply the champion's method um, as you journey through these uncertain and complex times. So thank you very much. Bye, everyone.